I am Mai Virno. I'm the artist and founder at Playful Ground in Monterey, California. In this video, I wanted to share how to make colorful fish pillows, which I call Happy Monterey Sardines. So the process of it, I'm going to show as step-by-step -step instructions. Yeah, I wanted to explain the patterns. Patterns that I use for the pillow is pretty simple. This is for the head. This is a fold line, so that it will like that. And this one for the tail, same as the head. There is a fold line, so open it and it becomes one piece. And there's a middle part, this is a body, that you'll need four pieces of this, and two pieces of the head, and two pieces of the tail. So first, I picked eight different fabrics. Ta-da! They are here. People have told me that my way of picking pattern is something unique, and I usually do it more organic way but maybe I can talk a little bit about how I might choose my fabrics when I make something colorful and playful. One thing is to have different colors and the other thing is to have different types of patterns. For example, here this group, I call it circle group. Obviously, those two fabrics have circular patterns in different colors, green and yellow. Green has just green and white, pretty simple. Yeah, the yellow one has red and light blue, dark blue and white. So it's more colorful. Next group, I put them together because their base color is blue, yet there are dark blue and light blue mixed with some other colors. The top one is mostly blue and red. Those are the dominant colors. Compared to that, bottom one is very colorful. The difference between two in terms of the pattern is the top one is flower pattern. The bottom is more abstract, kind of similar to more like the circle group. Yeah, those are more organic dropped paint patterns. I put fabric into two groups because we needed two bodies to put together to make a pole. So two groups, each group has different color variation, also the type of patterns. Then I decided on which piece to become which part of the fish. Then I cut those pieces individually for, again, the head. Two pieces of head and two pieces of the tail and four pieces of the body. This is a fold line. This is the body pattern. And instead of using the edge for fold like head and tail, for body, I actually use this as a single piece and the other piece, then sew them together to make a body part. After cutting all of them, of course, I need to sew them together. So I did sew first sewing of these two panels here for the body. I run in the back to flatten everything nice and clean. Then attach the head and the tail. Again, the iron in the back to make everything nice and flat. So if you can see, I actually pinned this. This is the head side. The fish. Fish shape. 
That's one side and this is the other side. As you can see, after I finish sewing all the parts together, I selected circles for eyes. Two pieces of felt cut in circle in different sizes. The larger eye size is two and three quarter inches and the smaller one is one and three quarters, but the size of the eyes can be depending on your preference. And I'm gonna sew those eyes. I usually use zigzag stitch on the machine. You can stitch or you can do even straight stitch if zigzag is too much. But I only just sew the small piece attached to both the larger piece of the circle and the head. So just once around the small circle to sew all three pieces together. That's what I'm gonna do now. The next step is to put these two pieces together to make a cover for the pillow. I'm gonna pin them together, but I wanted to make sure these lines match between head and body and between the body and the tail. So I first pin those lines here and pin it, these lines. This line and that line, that together match it. Then pin right there and the other side too. These lines and, and this is the last one, this line. Actually, I'm not gonna be sewing all the way around. I need to leave open space for the stuffing to go in. So I make sure my hand will go inside. So I finished sewing both sides of the fish together and left a little opening here for stuffing. Before I'm gonna turn this over, I wanted to trim a few places and cut some places. So the places that I wanted to trim are these sharp corners. It's here, tail, tail, and corner. If you had too much fabric around that corners, it's hard to get nice sharp angle after turning. So I cut some extra fabric around those corners so that when I turn, I can push without having too much fabric in that tiny skinny area. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just trimming some fabric. Don't cut the stitches. Then I'm gonna also cut here and trim the fabric around this area. Also, I'm gonna give the straight cut outside of the stitches where they are curved. So that way that fabric stretches, cuts and stretches better to the shape rather than being tight and hard to get nice smooth curve. I usually just go around and cut, 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 cut. This is ready for turning over then these are the tools to get the corners out this it's called point turner and seam creaser i feel like i got these for bookmaking but also used for sewing this one is made out of bamboo and this is it's called bone folder for bookmaking so maybe used to be made out of bones 
you can grab one of these or you can just use pencil or chopsticks or whatever something long and a little bit pointy skinny to just push the corners out so grab one of these push 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 just be careful don't push too hard <laughs> so it won't break my stitches and push as much as you can to get a little skinny edge so you get a skinny end this is why you wanted to trim the extra fabric there's only tiny space here and if you had too much fabric around this area you will have a hard time pushing because all the extra fabric would be inside of this tiny spot i'm gonna try to do this with pencil to get to the skinny part, I might use the other side. Then I just switch to the pointing, pointy side. Then push it, push, 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 push. Usually it's fine, but just in case, it needs a little push here to push in. Now, you can see, this is ready to be stuffed. Stuffing I use is just uh, regular polyfill. I'm gonna put links to tools and materials in the description but the first I'm gonna start filling the tail part and the first important thing is that start with little small amount to fill the tips of the tail so i will grab a little small ball and put it to one of the tips of the fish tail and really push it push to the end on both sides make sure those skinny space is filled with pretty tightly filled with this material it's hard to get to really to the end but as long as you feel pretty good nice and tight and push to where you can push it should be fine then start putting a little more to fill the rest of the tail Again, push to fill it maybe a little tighter than you think it's enough because once you start using it the inside filling will be pressed and the volume is reduced by pressing so it's a good idea to fill a little tighter at the beginning so that later you will still have nice fluffy feeling instead of having flat fill 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 also try to have nice even surface you can press it some place has big bump and the other is dead so this is pretty good for the tail bounce is pretty good it's pretty tight Once the tail part feels pretty good for your liking, a little bit tighter than your liking as a pillow, then move on to the body part. Maybe a little separating the chunks to make it fluffier. Then put it and spread it out and fill the area that feels a little less make it nice and even keep going one pound of filling should be enough for this small size fish which is 24 inch long i get 10 pound box ideally i want this whole thing to be a little more sustainable in terms of materials i try a couple different fillings but I I don't like the feel of it, so I'm just using this general filling. Once you fill somewhat pretty good amount of filling to the bottom, also some stuffing on the head. When you do the head again, make sure to push the filling to the corner, get the corner filled. 
Then for the rest, often I feel like I miss some part on the edge, just here. So make sure pushing it to the end. Then work towards the opening. It's easier to work from further parts from the opening and work towards the opening. No more. It's pretty full. Making a little fat fish to start. And as the fish gets love from you, becomes the right feel. A little bit bumps are okay as long as the whole thing is filled pretty nice and tight. Make sure opening might feel a little too much but it's a good idea to fill this part a little more than again you think it's enough. Fabric stretches, the stuffing will be pressed so of course not to the point it's really hard makes it hard to close but something like this and the last test i usually do to make sure this feels good is to hold it yourself and see if you like a feeling so that's that and the last step of this fish making is to close this opening and you could do it with a machine, but I always do it by hand. It's a little tricky to do a machine. By the way, you can sew the entire thing by hand. It just takes longer, but if you don't have a machine, it's the same thing. It's just straight stitch. You can do zigzag on the eyes. Definitely, it cuts time if you have a machine. And so here we go, and let's finish sewing. Almost there. So the last step is to close this opening, and just to make the work maybe a little easier, you can pin together, fold it, the edge, and put two fabric together and just pin it. Sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't. Okay and to sew this I like to use some colored thread. Anytime the stitches can be seen on the outside I like to use some color for fun but it's up to you. You can use just regular white thread or like me, you can add a little color, although it's very subtle. So I picked the yellow. You can pick any color you want. Again, you can create some contrast. I could do pink or something for fun. And start from either end. Start from inside so that uh, not it's not gonna show. So I put the needle from inside out and push the knot in, then start sewing. Just kind of pinch pieces together and going around, going from one side of the fabric to the other side, over to the other side and keep going. So you hit the other end, you definitely don't want to have too much of the space between the stitches. Then that stuffing will start to come out from the gap. So try to be very close. Ooh, exciting! This is the last step. And once this is done, we'll see finished finish. I've done a workshop where people made their fish all by hand and that was three hour workshop and everyone was able to make one fish this size. It's possible to make this in about three hours. And 
Namaste. So that's the end. And oh, but not what I like to do after making not at the end is couple of times just to put the knot tight to the hoop. Ta-da! See, it's very hard to see, but this part is the hand sewn and everything is closed and fish is ready to swim. Finally, the happy Monterey sardine is ready for swimming or a good hug. So I hope you find this video helpful for you to make your own colorful fish pillow. Links to materials and tools are also in the description below as well as digital patterns of the fish. Please share your experience in making also in the comment and I would love to see photos of your fishes on Instagram with hashtag happy monterey sardines thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video